happy Saturday to one and all. How's everybody doing? It's raining here in New Jersey. Oh my God. I woke up to the most beautiful sound of the rain. Hope all is doing well. I wanted to come on and talk about Lindsay and especially Miss Lindsay. I am so annoyed with Lindsay. Off the bachelorette. And she's the lawyer. And I'm like, girl, what? Girl, like, what law school did you go to? Please tell me so I don't go there because it just makes no sense to me that you're having all these problems with Ryan because you didn't sign a prenup. No, no, no. You're having all these problems with Ryan, Bri Ryan, Brian, Rachel, because you should not have married him. And of course, I didn't watch the whole season. I, you know, I but I know who the players are. I know who's who and what's happening. And I just felt like you had more than enough time to gather data to get away from this man. Like you guys were engaged for two years, Rachel. So why were you not? Why were you not collecting the data all this time? Like, I am so annoyed that Brian had no money, no savings, no investments, but you had savings, you have investments, to the point that you were able to buy a house. Y'all know the Dusty Gill talk about he's saving in his 401k to buy a house. No, your 401k is not to buy a house. It is for your retirement. But if you need to borrow the money, you can. Though I don't recommend it unless you're at retirement age. Okay, if you're at retirement age, you want to start cashing out your 401k and use it to buy a house, that's cool. To me. But I just feel like Lindsay had so much time, y'all. She had so much time to gather data on Brian. And she did. She did gather the data. She even said in the video I did yesterday that she brought up a prenup, but they could not agree. He didn't want a prenup. And he didn't want a prenup. This is my translation because he didn't have anything. But she had a little something. So, boo boo, if you're 35, marrying a man who's 40 who has absolutely nothing, and you got to lose something in the bank, boo boo, don't you think you need to try to protect that? Who was it that said, we want prenup, we want prenup? Listen, there is nothing wrong with a prenup. I know some church folks, if you watch the video I did, church folks say, hey, you shouldn't get a prenup. That's because they ain't got no money. They're broke. Broke people will say that. They don't know. They live paycheck to paycheck. 90, 80 something percent of American, or is it 80? About 80% of Americans live paycheck to paycheck. So in other words, 80% of Americans are broke. What is broke? When you live paycheck to paycheck, when you're, you're waiting for the next paycheck to pay your bills, you cannot. Hey, you, you cannot afford to miss a paycheck. You know, they're saying we're all between a pay a, a missed paycheck and the homeless shelter. Uh, when they say that, the job said, not me. <laughs> not me. So I, I just wanted to come on just to see, am I the only one that's really annoyed with this whole Rachel and Brian situation? Like, ladies, this is why I keep telling y'all, please do not marry men. Please do not marry men that requires you to struggle and build with him. At 40, Brian should have had a little something in the bank. He should not be at the point where he can't move out of Rachel's house. He has no money. He can't pay for his lawyers. He's only making, let's just add up to $2,000 a month. $2,000 a month? <sighs> Let me share this out, y'all. 
and and Miss Jennifer Lopez married a whole man that you know. I don't know if he's cheap or he's frugal. There's a difference, you know. There's a difference between cheap and frugal. I'm either. I'm neither cheap or frugal. I like to live a comfortable life. Like I went out with my girlfriend. I took one a uh, uh, girlfriend of mine out for dinner, and we went to one of my husband and I favorite spot. And when she opened the menu, she was like, "Oh my god, it is so expensive here." It was for her birthday. In the meantime, y'all, she she had a uh, a five thousand dollar Chanel bag in her lap. And honey, I sat there. I enjoyed my food. And when she was there, she was like, Janice, this was excellent. She said, okay. She said, I see you pay for experiences. I say, yeah, I'll pay for experience. It's nothing for me to go to a restaurant and pay $50 for a plate. So she's walking around with a Chanel bag. But she, she, she wouldn't go and pay $30 for a meal. To me, that's crazy. To me, I would prefer to go to Burlington's. Well, I, I buy my purse at Burlington's or Target. Get me a purse for $50 and save that $4,000, that $5,000 that I can do a whole lot with. I can get somebody to clean my house. They talk about, oh my God, you got somebody to clean my house. I say, you could too if you wasn't paying $10,000 for no purse. Somebody just bought a purse from the other day and we looked it up. It was, it was $4,000 over for, you might as well say $5,000 for a purse. So I'm neither cheap and I'm not frugal. I like to live a comfortable life and I don't mind paying for experience, experiences. I'll pay for somebody to come clean my house. Even my daughter. She's like, mommy, where's the cleaning people come? I said, as soon as you clean up your room, you know how you have to clean before the cleaning people come. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll buy a $50 purse, but I'll pay somebody $200 a month to clean my house. And I'll pay a hundred dollars a month let's just say let's see my bag or mike bag and i'll pay a hundred dollars a month for laundry to do my laundry because what i'm doing is i'm buying my time right if i have somebody cleaning my house th that's hours that i don't have to clean my house if i'm paying somebody to do my laundry those are hours I don't have to do my own laundry. All that I have to do when Mike pick up the bag, I just put the stuff away. My husband paid for a landscaper. We've always had a landscaper. That's saving my husband hours of cutting the lawn. Plus, my husband ain't got no time to be cutting no lawn, honey. My husband is, is, is an executive, honey. He working, he traveling. He don't travel as much as he used to. He ain't got no time to be going out here pushing no lawn more. But he can pay somebody... $200 a month to cut the lawn. Do you see what I mean? So I don't know if Ben is cheap or I don't, I don't know if he's cheap. It sounds like he's frugal and not cheap. But J-Lo, she want to spend all the money and then cry that he mumbles about spending money. I don't understand. Make it make sense to me. Okay, that's my rant. <laughs> Angel, hello, my dear cousin. How are you? I haven't seen you forever, Angel. What's going on? Essential Jess. Good morning, beautiful Jess. I love, I too love the rain. Me too. Uh, Beverly, hello, my darling. Good morning, Mr. Janice. Hello, hello, hello. Louis Williams, she should have got one of those fine brothers. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm really... I'm really annoyed with this whole Lindsay situation. Be sure to thumbs up and share this out for me, please. So yesterday, last night, I did the video about Lindsay, about the article. And I don't know if you guys 
listen to the video. Let me just play a, a, a part of it for you if you didn't hear it. And then I'm going to read a comment that someone made a comment on uh, on the video. Um, hold on. Y'all. And I basically say she married for love because that's what she did. She married. She married for love. Are y'all seeing this? Our girl, the bachelor, Rachel Lindsay, is getting a, a divorce. It's nasty. Brian wants all her money. She offered him $10,000 a month. He was like, oh, no, ma'am, I don't think so. I want $16,000 a month. You had me flying all over the country, all over the world, going to luxury hotels, eating that luxury restaurant. You need to maintain the life that you have gotten me accustomed to. And Rachel is saying, ah, 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 ah. Ah, 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 ah. ah. I ain't got that type of money. I ain't got that type of money. <laughs> Honey, we have learned that Brian is a dusty. Brian is calling Rachel a lie because she said, she said she didn't know he wanted a divorce. She has spoke to him two minutes before and then he go file for divorce. She said, she said she didn't know. But then Brian went to court and provided the, um, the foolishness, the text messages that yes, you did know. Yes, you did know. And now guess what, girl? Our girl, Rachel, is now saying that she regrets not having a prenup. Girl, girl, she got married for love only, okay? <laughs> I'm love. married, I should add the S, I'm married for love only. Uh-huh, and this is exactly man. why, Rachel, you are gonna be paying out of your behind because you're married for love, for love only, okay? You married a whole dusty. You married a whole man at 40 years old, didn't have no retirement, Nothing. no investments, no savings. He's broke. Broke. He ain't got no money. No money. And you's a lawyer and you didn't sign no prenup, girl, you's a dumb dumb. What law school did you go to so I don't go there? Because I'm really thinking about going back to law school. What law school you went to, Rachel, so I don't go there? Because I don't know how you's a lawyer and you ain't signed no prenup. Huh? Come on, Church. How is it you're a lawyer, but you ain't signed no you prenup? Ain't signed no prenup. And all, all for the for the all the people over here talk about Christians don't sign prenups. That's because Christians ain't got no money. You ain't got no money. The church is broke. broke. Well, the church is not broke, but the Christians are broke. Okay, y'all got to fry fish dinners to bury your day. Okay, y'all living paycheck to paycheck. Y'all can't even send your kids to college because y'all believe in Jesus is going to make a way. You live paycheck to paycheck because you believe you're going to wake up tomorrow and see some manna on your doorstep. <laughs> so, of course, Christians ain't sign no prenup because Christians ain't got no money to sign no prenup. Right. So no, y'all don't need to sign no prenup because y'all ain't got no money. Right. Y'all live paycheck to paycheck. You don't know what it's like to have $50,000 sitting in your bank account. You don't know what it's like to have $250,000 in your retirement at 40 on, years church. old. And granted, that ain't even no money. That ain't no money. Uh -huh. You don't know what it's like to have $500,000 in a retirement account. Huh? You don't know, you don't know the difference between assets and liability. Come on. So yeah, Christians they sign no prenup because y'all ain't got no money. Wow. Y'all's broke. Mm -hmm. Y'all live paycheck to paycheck. You ain't got no assets. Right. You have no money. You have no savings. Right. You have no investment. Right. You're waiting on Social Security to retire. You're going to work till you're 78. <laughs> not because you want to, but because you have to, because you's broke. I'm talking to the church. Come on. But anyways, hey, cuz, and happy Friday. <laughs> Yeah, that's for the church for talk about Christians don't sign prenup. You know, the same way they talk about Christians don't date. 
But y'all don't know what dated means. Right. So let me go to this comment that this person, this person left. Okay. I was going to respond. But I was like, no, let me just respond on it this morning, just in case somebody else, somebody else, um, I'm trying to expand this. I wanted to go to this because, you know, people come in, they don't, who don't follow. So, hold on, hold on, wait a minute, hold on, wait a minute, hold on, wait a minute. So, I went on to say that. Brian didn't have no money. He was broke. Rachel should have made sure she signed a prenup, right? Where is the comments, child? Did I expand it too big? Okay, here we go. Okay, here we go. Um... My Mala wanted a life experience. She says prenup couldn't help because she made the money during the marriage. This take is misleading. She said I'd herself, they were more equal at the time of marriage. Listen for details in her interview with Natasha Parker. Now, <coughs> how many of you, <clears throat> how many of you, excuse me, saw the video where Brian wants $75,000 to pay his legal fees. Did y'all see that video? I did, right? Rachel responded and said, the only money she have is in her savings. And if she paid her, if she paid his legal fees, she would not be able to pay legal her legal fees. And she said the only money she has is what's in her bank account and in her retirement plan. So if the judge ruled on Brian's favor that Brian, that Rachel has to pay her legal fees, tell me where she's going to get that money. Comment below. If the judge ruled in Brian's favor, that Lindsay has to pay her le his legal fees, which I think that's how it's going to go because he has no money. And she, all she has in her bank account is enough money to pay her lawyers. and But she does have retirement money. Tell me where it's going to go. Where Where is she going to have to take the money to pay him? Drop it in the comments. Drop in the comments. I want to know, where do you think Lindsay's going to have to take that money? Her, thank you, Deborah. She's going to have to take it from her retirement. Not that the judge is going to say, not that the judge is going to say you have to give him a half of your retirement, but if the judge rule in his favor and she is saying the only money I have is $80,000 in her savings plus her retirement. And the judge ruled in Brian's favor because Brian does not have any money to pay his lawyers. Brian is asking for $16,000 a month. If the judge ruled in Brian's favor, Rachel is going to have to take that money from her retirement. The comment said 
Th this take is Miss Lee. She said, is herself that her more equal at the time? No, they were not equal, Rachel. You were not equal because Brian had nothing. He had no savings. Brian had no retirement. It's the same thing as Rashid and Simone. I'm going to try to be respectful because I did like them at one time. But I mean, if you ever talk about a Dusty and a Pikmisha, yes, that's that situation. Like that whole situation with Simone and Rashid, Simone was being such a Pikmisha that she was overlooking everything. She knew this man had nothing at 45 years old. And she was willing to marry him and risk everything she's worked for. She even said, if this doesn't work out, I'm going to have to pay him. And yes, she was still begging and pleading and trying to marry. And thank God she woke up. So no, uh, lady who commented, Brian, even though Rachel said they were equal, they were not equal. We, we are not equal if I have retirement money and you have no retirement. You're 40. I'm 35. You're 40. You have no retirement money. I would have never married my husband if he did not have any retirement money. Because what that tells me, ladies, in dating, gathering data, this is what dating is. This is why I have the, a problem with the church talking about Christians don't date which is why divorce is so bad in the church, it's worse than in the world, is you must gather the data. And the data you gather tells you something about the man you are dating. If my husband was living paycheck to paycheck, if he had no savings, if he had no investments, if he had no retirement, I would not have married him. Because what savings, investments, and retirement tells me is that you're thinking about your future, you are planning, you know one day you're going to have to retire and you need, we can't live on social security. That's what it tells me. You cannot tell me at 40 years old, 40 years old, Brian had no retirement, no savings, but Rachel went ahead and married him anyway. And then she wanted to talk about, oh, we were equal. You were never equal. Ladies in your dating. You're not equal if you have a house. He doesn't have a house, but he can't go buy you a house tomorrow. It's fine if he doesn't own a home, but be at least able to go buy me one tomorrow. We are not equal. If I have retirement money and you're 40 and you don't have none, we're not equal. We're not equal if you're living paycheck to paycheck and I have savings, three months uh, emergency funds. We're not equal. Because what that tells me is when I go out to have the baby, if something happens to me, to you, we're going to be homeless because we have no emergency fund. This is why dating... Two or three types of guys is so powerful. And it's like, I'm like, why is this book not like has a million reviews and a million books, copies sold? Because this book is so powerful. You must learn to gather data and walk away. Rachel had two years. Two years, Rachel, you had two years. And what did you do with the two years? Angel, right, girl? I've been so busy missing more of your dating content. Need to reread your books. Thank you, babes. Appreciate it. So sorry for Rachel, but she pro proves you right, cousin. You cannot marry for love alone. You cannot. Only black women are encouraged to marry for love alone because they want you, th you to struggle. Huh? Why y'all want to struggle? Don't you think our ancestors struggled enough for us? Why y'all want to get married and struggle? I... I don't even know how they do it. I don't know. Shalanda. Hey, Shalanda. Um, keep it simple, please. Unfortunately, she was his retirement plan. Exactly. Rachel was R Brian's retirement plan. 
And she should have realized that and walked away. When she, when she did not, when he did not want them to sign a prenup, that was the sign. Brian, Rachel, when he couldn't pay for anything, y'all, watch the video I did about what he pays for. She bought the house. During, if, if, if the house is in California, the, if she bought that house when they were married, the judge is probably going to let her sell the house and pay him out. Or she's going to have to take that money from her retirement account. So all this foolishness about marrying for love alone, don't do it. It does not work for us. It doesn't work for us. Don't do it. It, it is not helpful, woman, for us to marry a man that we have to shell out the money and take care of him. So don't do it. It doesn't work. Do not date with your heart. Date with your mind and your brain. For God's sakes, ladies, please. Stop falling in love. What are you falling in love with? You're falling in love with an emotion, with a feeling. But feelings change. Feelings change. Emotions change. Grow in love with the foundation that this man has prepared himself to be a husband. If he can't provide for you, he can't pay no mortgage, he can't put roof over your food on your table, he has not prepared himself. He's not planning for your future. He has not prepared himself to be married. Being emotional doesn't work. So now let's go on, on, on over here to Hoisha Fatisha Picnisha. You know who that is? Do you know who Hoisha Fatisha Picnisha is? Okay, since y'all not watching these videos, because my video watch been low. I know it's hot. It's summer. Y'all at the beach. <laughs> So let's go on over to Hoisha Fatisha Picnisha. Girl, it doesn't work, ladies. It doesn't work. Hoisha Fatisha Picnisha is Jennifer Lopez. Listen to this foolishness, y'all. So Jennifer Lopez has another failed marriage with Ben Affleck. Failed. And Jennifer Lopez's name over here at the church girl is Hoisha Fatisha Picnisha. Okay? Get it right. Jennifer Lopez, Hoisha Fatisha Picnisha. She wants half. She wants yeah. half of Ben Affleck money. Mind you, he's worth a hundred million dollars. Boo boo. Hoisha Fatisha Picnisha is worth four. Hundred million dollars, but girlfriend is saying you's gonna pay me half. I want half of your moon. That's what she's saying. She said, I want half of your money for this sham of a marriage, for this failed marriage. You abandoned me, you left me, you don't want to be on TV, you don't want the paparazzi taking your picture. I want <laughs> half of your okay. Half she wants, girl. Can you imagine? Half. Anyways, girl, hey, all right, right cuz. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Happy Thursday or today's Wednesday, girl. I don't know. I can't keep up. <laughs> Let's forward to the article. Why she's a Picnisha. We know she's a Hoisha. You know, we know she's a Fatisha, but she's a Picnisha also, okay? First of all, she always up underneath some man, girl. Oh, you know, that is I'm not good. good. Mm-hmm. Jennifer Lopez was reportedly gearing Listen. up for a messy divorce battle with Ben Affleck amid rumors of their marital troubles. The singer allegedly footed the bill. 
the singer allegedly paid the bill for many expenses during their marriage because Affleck grumbled about spending money. Mm. There is nothing wrong about being a conscious spender and saving your money. Personally, I don't see anything with, wrong with it. No, nope. it's a recession. We're living in a recession, and we all need to watch our spending. Okay? Right. Sources close to Jennifer Lopez have now revealed that she feels jilted, jilted ahead of their imminent divorce and will seek half of Ben Affleck estimated hundred and fifty Can you imagine? million dollar half. fortune. Jennifer Lopez allegedly seek revenge against Ben Affleck after picking up the tab during their marriage. Ain't nobody told you to pick up the tab, girl. <laughs> You was picking up the tab, trying to show off. But you you, you was paying all the bills, bought the house yourself, bought the ring yourself, and all Jesus. of that. Girls, ain't nobody feel sorry for you. We don't feel sorry for Patricia Hoisha Pikmisha over here. Reports suggest that Lopez and Affleck potential split will not come cheap for Argo actor. The singer allegedly wants to part with half his fortune because she picked up the tabs during their nearly two years of marriage. According to Radar Online, a, co a source close to the singer shared that Lopez, who is reportedly worth $400 million, has been saying she'll seek re redress in Affleck's wallet after realizing that she funded most of their lavish lifestyle throughout their relationship. Jesus, talk about a pygmisha. So Ben Affleck is a scrub. Is that what you're telling us? <laughs> ben is a scrub. It's just that girl married at first sight. She pregnant again. Ugh. I forgot her name. The one that wanted tan, a tan man so she could have light skinned babies. The girl is pregnant again. And I'm like, girl, what, <laughs> he, where he work at? Where does he work? He's just sitting at home eating, getting fat. <laughs> and you on baby number two. And he ain't got no job. He ain't got no job. <laughs> he looks like the Philsbury man. I can't remember their name now. But the girl that wanted the tan husband so she could have light-skinned babies on baby number two. And the, the husband ain't got no job. No job. <sighs> the source added that Affleck always grumbled about spending money. Grumbled. So Lopez decided to, to not bother well, she him been to avoid hearing his complaints about her spending habits. Okay. So you're spending the money because he don't want to spend the right. money. He's a conscious spender. Right, mm -hmm. we all should be conscious spenders these days. Mm -hmm. So now, because you spend the money trying to show off, he should pay you back. You know what? I'm gonna I'm pray, Jennifer. <laughs> I'm gonna pray that you have to pay him. Uh -huh. Okay, you need you to pay learn him. To listen, Fatisha Pitmisha. <laughs> One of the little known secrets is Jennifer paid for much of their marital expenses for and now feels he owes her. The source said she's adding up all those private jet bills. She puts on her plastic the hotels and meals, Jesus. clothes, coffee runs, gas. Excuse me. The cost of living was done on her dime. Jesus. She paid the lion's share for the $60 million mansion they bought Jennifer. Why you need a $60 million mansion if your husband don't want to spend $60 million right. on a mansion? Uh-huh. Then took so much money out of her, at least that's what she's saying, the source act. No, no, no. He didn't take it out of you. You poured it out. <laughs> if he doesn't want to spend the money, why are you spending the money? Exactly. Okay, let's stop right here. So you see what I mean? Ladies, it just does not work out for us. Ben, Jennifer, Ben knew Ben was a conscious spender. I'm not going to call him cheap because I don't know if he's cheap. She wanted to have two weddings. You want to have two weddings? You pay for it. I'm with Ben on that. So now that they're getting a divorce, now she wants all the money back that she spent. You chose to spend that money, ma'am. Did he ask you to spend the money? No, he didn't. If he's a conscious spender, he's not going to want to have 55 weddings. If he's a conscious spender, he's not going to want to buy a $60 million house. It's just like there are two homes that we saw down the street from each other. Let me tell y'all, 
beautiful homes, perfect home. The last one we saw last week. Oh my God, beautiful. Central air. Central air, not air, air. Central air. Big old backyard for Lou Michael to ride his bike. Two plots. You could put up another house there. We could sell that land, put up another house, or however the city does it. Three bedrooms on the second floor with its own bathroom. So I would have my own bathroom. Mike would have his own bathroom. Little Michael would have his own bathroom. Lexi would be on the third floor and she would have the master suite and have her own bathroom. But me and my husband, we sat and we talk about it. No, we don't want to spend a million dollars for our house. That's not what we budget. Our budget is 700000 But even if we say, okay, let's bump our 700 up to 300 more. The taxes starting out, y'all, is $14,000. The taxes went from $6,600 to $14,000 a year because they updated the house and put all this stuff in it. And that's just for 2020. This is 2024. Uh, when they just put the house up. So next year, that taxes is probably going to go up to $20,000. So we're like, do we want to start out paying $14,000 a year in taxes? Next year, it will probably be 20000 20, Do we want to do that? No, we don't. We, we're both getting ready to retire. We want to relax. We want to enjoy. And we want to pay something similar to what we're paying in this house. Yes, we understand that we will have to pay more for, for the house. And we understand that we're going to be paying more taxes. And it's okay. But we don't want to pay a million dollars and $20,000 a year in taxes starting out. Because this is our forever home. We do not want to move again. When we got this house, we understood we're going to stay here for 10 years, get build up the equity. And then we're going to move. Unfortunately, when the 10 years happened, it was COVID. It was, um, market was bad. And so it it, it just have turned out. But we understand, we pray, we believe in God. Things is going to get better. We're going to find our forever home. And we're going to pay for it cash. We want to buy our forever home cash. Come on, hallelujah, thank Jesus. We're going to pay for it cash. And we don't want to be burdened down and stressed out with taxes. And because Mike and I are older and this is the children's home, we don't want them to have to be burdened out with taxes. So no, we're not going to get a million dollar house and $20,000 of taxes. To me, that's being a conscious spender. Jennifer Lopez, she's such an attention seeker that she's like, oh, $60 million. Yes, honey. Six million dollars house, and I bet you Ben and Jennifer Garner house probably cost two million dollars. But J Jennifer Lopez is trying to upstage them with a six million dollar house. You bought that six million dollar home. I'm sure Ben didn't want to spend it if he's a conscious spender. Two weddings. Uh, Overseer Beverly. So now that he's the, the marriage is over, you want to cry foul and go foul and talk about you want all your money back? I hope, you know what? You in California, I hope uh, you have to pay Ben. I hope you have to pay him. Teach you a lesson. Mm -hmm. uh, perhaps she should have ran. No prenup. He's a doctor. I, a, B, D has nothing. Uh, she, he's, a, he's a chiropractor. Mm-hmm. Uh, restore, highly favored. I'm learning that you have to work towards something as a man. Um, Restore, I don't understand what that means, honey. What does that mean? Could you clarify? I want to make sure I understand. Wonder Boy, this happens to men all the time, so I don't feel sorry for women uh, that pay, pay alimony. Women should not marry men that they have to pay alimony to. Okay. God did not create us to be providers. But if women want to be providers and you want to be the man, Rachel and Jennifer, you need to pay out your behind. Yeah, go ahead and pay you. 
Okay, dudes, I'm talking to, I said I want to be stable, stability. Dude, I'm talking to, I said I want to be stable. stable. So restore, if you're talking to somebody, you got to tell him you want to be stable. Is he stable? If he's not stable, walk away. But why are you still talking to him? Bye, uh, blocked. Wonder boy, men need to sign prenups so the sisterhood doesn't take all their money. I believe in prenup, Wonder Boy. I don't know if you're new over here. I don't know if you're new over here, but I believe in prenup. I'm all for prenups. My husband didn't ask me to sign a prenup, but if he did, I would have signed it as long as the prenup was fair. And I did not choose a husband that if the marriage don't work out, I have to pay my alimony. I chose a husband where if the marriage don't work out, he's going to pay me alimony. I'm going to get the house. I'm going to get child support. And... Uh, Half of his stuff, okay. <laughs> okay, ladies, don't don't lead with your emotions. Be diligent. Okay, stop being emotional. Be analytical. Deborah, I knew this wasn't going to work. He's very laid back. At, right. So he's a very laid back guy, but he married Ben and I'm, I'm assuming you talk about Ben and Jennifer. He's very laid back, but then he chose a wife that need the spotlight. That's not going to work out. When you see his pictures, he looks so depressed. Huh? He looks so down and depressed. Cause he don't want no camera in his face and Je jennifer's like yes honey and this is this is why this is why you should not jump from one relationship to another relationship let's look at some of these pictures Do, don't do it. Give your time. You give yourself time to think, relax, clear your mind, clarify what you want. Because when you jump in a relationship, you might realize you jump out of the fire, out of the frying pot. And look at this. Look at him. Look at him. Does this look like a happy man to y'all? Does he look happy? He looks so depressed. Look at this. Look at his face. Poor thing. Look at him. She's smiling and laughing and he's just there. Look at him. Can you, if my husband was out and he looked like this all the time, I would, uh -uh. look at his face. Poor thing. Have you ever seen a more sad and depressing husband? Ugh. Look at him. Yeah, I'm here. I'm here with all these triggers. I'm here with all these vinaigrettes. Yeah, I'm here. Look at him. He's like, oh my God. She has me here with all these vinaigrettes. Oh my God. All these black people. Oh my God. All these black people. Oh, look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Oh, this is Jennifer Garner. Oh, Jennifer Garner is pretty. Look at this. Honey, if if all your husband pictures look like this, get a, give that man his freedom. <laughs> give him his freedom. Come on, y'all. I got class at 10 o'clock. Okay. Wonder boy. Iman Shepard was done wrong and you girls celebrated so men should celebrate women pain as well. When you say you girls, who do you mean? Do you have a video of me being celebrating it? I please find the video where I was celebrating and uh and post it here so I could watch it. See, over here you can't just come over here wonder boy and run your mouth. You got to have facts, okay? You have to show proof. Over here, we deal in proof, verification, and documentation. We, pay, we ask for credit scores, credit report, blood work. We go to the job. We get the W-2s. We go down to the bank, and we get the, the savings. So if you go come over here 
and you're going to say something, you're going to need to verify it and doc show us documentation. Okay? You you on the wrong channel, boo-boo. I don't remember your name. I would have remembered Wonder Boy. You on the wrong channel. This is not the typical black woman YouTube channel. So, so you know, you might want to check yourself. If you don't have verification and documentation of Janice saying something, you're going to have to watch your mouth over here. Okay? Uh, oh, Brianna, and what's the does what's the scrub her scrub husband name is? What's the scrub name? What's his name? Alfonso. <laughs> Miguel. What's Brianna's husband name? What's that that scrub name? Uh, I can't remember his name. Jesus. I don't remember. Uh huh. She on um, baby number two, and he still ain't got no job. He still don't have no stable job. She's another one. <sighs> Bias against men needs to be called out. I have no idea what you're talking about, Wonder Boy. Men that chose gold diggers are not talking, uh, to thinking with their heads. The problem with men who call women gold diggers is you don't even have enough money to pay rent. So I don't understand how you're calling us gold diggers when all we need is for you to pay the rent. You can't pay no rent. If anything, you the dusty. You can't tell me why is one husband to pay rent and put a roof overhead and food on our table. We're gold diggers. You're just a broke dusty. Get off YouTube and go market yourself. Go back to school, get you another degree, go get a training. Maybe go drive Uber or Lyft or deliver some groceries to put some more money in your bank account and stop being on YouTube and social media arguing with women. You know, well-established men like my husband, his frat brothers, he don't call women gold diggers. You know why? They're able to provide, honey. They're able to provide. You'll never hear my husband and his frat brothers call their wives gold diggers. Never. You know who call women gold diggers? Broke, dusty, scrub men. Men who ain't got no money. Men who can't pay no mortgage or pay no rent. Men who need women to build them up, fix them up. Men who need women to struggle with them, build them up and dig in the pit and be dirty. Men who are emotionals because they can't pay rent. You want to call women gold diggers? No. Get off social media and go build up your wealth and yourself so that you can become an established man so that you can pay mortgage and put food on our table. Because most modest women, wise women over here at the church girl, that's all we want. We just want you to be able to put a, comf a comfortable roof over our head, good food on our table. What's the good food called? Um, organic food on our table. <laughs> That's all we want. And a couple of dollars in our pocketbook, a vacation here and there, private school for our kids, music lessons and tennis lessons, college fund, Huh? Retirement 401k, 457, savings and investments, emergency funds. That's all we're asking for. How does that make us gold diggers? I'm just trying to figure it out. <laughs> Let me get off this thing. I got my um, I got my 10 o'clock class. Uh, Sister Beverly, two weddings. He didn't want two weddings. She wanted two weddings. Miserable. Exactly. She's miserable. Why did they get back together 20 years later? because they were both on the rebound. This is why you do not. When you just come out of a, re a relationship, most soul rights, when you come out of a relationship, especially a marriage, that is the, that's the only one I, I recognize over here. We don't shack up. We don't believe in boyfriends. And we don't believe in being engaged for longer than six months to a year. If you've been engaged for five years, girl, you's a girlfriend, okay? When you come out of a marriage, you don't need to go jump in another relationship and God forbid, please don't get married. 
Give it time. Pray. Seek the Lord. It's 9.30. I didn't hear my husband get on. He gets on the call with his frat brothers every Saturday morning at 9 for prayer. Hold on, hold on, hold on, y'all. Okay. I had to wake him up. The two Michaels are still sleeping. Huh. Oh, that's all we want. Men that pray. My husband and his frat brothers, they pray every Saturday morning at 9.30. That's all we want. Uh-huh. Yeah, do not you're you're emotionally uh drained. You're you're not thinking straight. You're on the rebound. Okay? You're being emotional. Do not run and jump in another marriage or relationship. Give it time. Clear your head. Think things through. Is this what you really want? And please don't get married again. Cuz now they're both again to be getting a divorce. Is he on the pills? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, if you're married to Jennifer, that would drive you to be on it, right? Allegedly. Deborah, yes, he does absolutely. You can see it in his face. He looks sad and depressed. He needs to be out just sitting in his backyard enjoying the scenery. Vincent, thank you. Brianna and Vincent. Huh? Did he get a job yet? Did Vincent get a good job yet? where he can provide for a wife and two babies. No, she keep popping out the tan babies, taking care of the husband and the two babies. And he still ain't got no good job. She's another one. When they get a divorce, you're going to watch, she's going to have to pay him alimony and give her him half of her stuff. Deborah, Vincent, thank you, boo-boo. <laughs> Hello, Vincent from Married at First Sight. I can't believe they are still together. They're together because of her. They're not together because of him. They're together because she's a picnic. She, she's desperate to have tan babies. And, and he's okay with her paying all the bills and taking care of him. But let me tell you, once he get up on his feet and he gets the money in his pocket, oh, she gonna leave her. It always happens. Still no job. How are they living if she at home raising their, their baby girl? I mean, little job here and there, this here and here and here. He ain't got no real job for Overseer Beverly. He ain't got no career. If you're going to be married and you have wife and kids, you need a career. You ain't need no job. You need a career. He ain't got no career, first lady. He ain't got no career. He ain't got no career. She's still doing her nine to five LOL work. She she better. She have to. She can't. She can't not do her nine to five. They will be hungry and they will starve and they will be homeless. And she better pray to God she don't have to go on bed rest uh, for six months because they're gonna be homeless. Okay, y'all, I didn't put this in here, but since y'all is here, we might as well talk about it. We might as well talk about the president of these United States, okay? We, we have to talk about our president. Listen, listen, listen to the born again saints. Let me take this down. Listen, L let me get the Bible. I gotta get, I put a Bible picture up here. Listen to the born again believer. You can't say Biden is your president, but Trump is not your president, okay? You Well, you can say, but then I would have to have you to check your, your salvation. You can't say Trump is your president, but Biden is not your president. You understand what the Bible says in Timothy? Pray for kings and leaders and those in authority. In the United States, we do not have kings, but we have presidents. We are to pray for our president and his cabinet. We are to pray for our governors and our leaders, our congressperson and our senators. So that, what? So that it will be well with us. I don't care who's in the White House, Trump, Biden, Obama, 
Bush, Clinton, Bush, whoever, Reagan, Washington, Pookie, Ray Ray. <laughs> I don't care who sits at in the Oval Office. As long as he's in the Oval Office, that is my president. You understand? When Trump win the election on February 5th, 2024, and is sworn into office January 20th, let me check the date. <laughs> let me check the date. When will the president be sworn in? Uh, July, uh, November, December 20th. When Trump is sworn in January 20th, 2025. Guess what? That's my president. That's my president. You know why? Because I live in the United States. I'm a citizen in the United States of America. This is my country. That is my president. I don't care who it is. I don't care if it's Biden, Obama. I don't care if it's the tree. That is my president. And I'm going to get up every day and I'm going to pray for the president. Okay. I just want y'all to know where I'm at. Okay. So honey, we need to talk about and pray for our president. Did y'all see this? Did y'all see this video? I feel like y'all not watching my videos, y'all, because my videos are not even hitting a thousand. What's going on, cousins? Okay, here we go. President Biden, the greatest man in the world, the most powerful man in the world. This is July 7, 2024. The leader of the free world met with NATO leaders this week. And today, guess what President Biden did? Lord Jesus. He called the president of Ukraine, Putin. Mm, mm, mm. President Biden called the leader of Ukraine, Putin. I, I want I want to give you time to think about it. To to hear what I'm saying. Yes. There's been a lot been going on. I haven't made a political video in about two days. I'm gonna catch you up. But I th 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 this is it. They they're gonna have to do something. They're gonna have to do something. This is the independent. Biden introduces Ukraine leader Zelensky as Putin in latest gap. Do y'all understand that there's a war going on between Putin and Zelensky and the president of the United States, the most powerful man in the world, the leader of the free world, mm. called <clears throat> the president of Ukraine. Whose whose country is getting annihilated by 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 Putin, who's who's blowing up children's hospitals, blowing up homes. The president of the United States, Joe Biden, called the president of Ukraine, whose name is Zelensky. He called him Putin. Lord Jesus, take that in. Take it in. If this doesn't do it for the Democratic Party, I don't know what will. Like, I don't know what the Democrats are waiting to do to realize that Uncle Joe has got to go. <laughs> Uncle Joe just don't, just don't have it no more. So let me catch you up on what's been going on at NATO. Yesterday, he he gave a NATO uh, I, I a a general, uh, you know what, I'm going to do a video on that. I'm going to do a separate video on that. But let's just talk about this one. Biden was delivering remarks at the NATO summit taking place this week in Washington, D.C. Moments before a high stakes press conference to a, a lie... Allay fears about his capacity as president. Joe Biden, Joe Biden made another serious gaffe introducing Ukraine leader Volodymyr Zelensky as President Putin.
Oh, Jesus, help us. The 81 year old was delivering remarks at the NATO summit taking place this week in Washington, D.C. Biden was attending an event to celebrate the Ukraine compact, a bilateral agreement unifying countries in their support of the war, war to nation. And now I want to hand it over to the president of Ukraine, who has much courage as he does determination. Ladies and gentlemen, President Putin. Mm -mm. President Putin. This is what the president of the United States said. <laughs> the president of the free world. The greatest man alive. The most powerful man in the world. Called the leader of of Ukraine, whose nation is getting plummeted by Putin, he called him President Putin. Jesus. I, I want y'all to take time to, to, to take it in. I, I don't know if y'all got look at look at him laughing. <laughs> to shrug off the slip joking i'm better as he took to the stage you're a hell of a lot better biden told him cousins we need to pray we have got to pray she said uh, masu said oh my god papa joe we got pray for the president hallelujah thank you jesus we have got to pray for our president I don't know what's going to happen. We don't know what's going to happen. We don't know what's going to happen. There's so much going on in fine, but what we are praying is for God to give wisdom. Wisdom. And this, and this is why we pray. We can't, as born again believers, we can't take away ourselves and say, oh, we don't care. No. Orlando, I wish I could meet a woman that is willing to pay all my all of my bills. Well, they're out there, Orlando. There's a lot of pink niches and dust bunnies out there that, that are willing to pay all your bills for you. Just, just post it on social media. You'll find somebody who's willing to pay all your bills for you. But the question is, why would you want that? Hmm? Why would you want somebody to pay your bills? Why, why don't you want to get yourself established, become an established man, get yourself around some men to help you to understand that is the man's and father and husband responsible to provide and protect his family? The question is, why you want a woman to pay your bills for you? That's the question. What's wrong with you? Hmm. What's wrong? What's the matter? Why are you looking for somebody, a woman, to help you to pay the bills when God created you to be the provider and the protector of the family? Do are you are you gonna be expecting her to respect you and honor you and adore you while she's paying all the bills? Hmm. I'm just asking because men, what I don't understand about these men, they want to be honored and respect and adored. And they want the woman to pay the bills and take care of them. I don't understand it. I don't understand it. Angel, cousin, when you get a chance, are you going to be reading, reading what? Uh, how can Janice be a gold digger when she's helping to generate wealth for her family? I never hear of rich or com men complain taking care of their wives. Exactly. Huh? I'm going to be retiring in seven years. I'll be 52 when I retire. As a matter of fact, I am right now, I just started an investment account for where the goal for this account is $100,000. I will be retiring in seven years. $100,000 to pay the taxes on my husband's 401k and my 457. I just started this account a few months ago. 
and the goal is a hundred thousand dollars. So far, I have three thousand seven hundred thirty-two dollars. Check out my investment channel, y'all. If y'all don't, if y'all not um, subscribe to my financial workshop, here it is. Click on it. There's there's my financial, uh, my freedom money. That's my financial workshop. See, when, when, when you say you want a husband, and this is just a newest account. <laughs> when you say you want a husband to provide, they feel like you want to work and get all your money to go buy fake hair, fake nails, and purses. That's because they ain't never met no good woman. They ain't never met no wise woman. We are wise women over here. We're not foolish women. Yeah. Every penny I earn is going towards my children's generational wealth. My husband provides for us. He pay every bill in this house. 11 years we've been married. Mortgage, light, water, gas, cable, the truck, or life insurance. The only thing I pay is my health insurance because my health insurance is cheaper. Where I'm paying about $800 a month let's just say $400 every two weeks. When we got married 11 years ago, if we went on my husband's insurance, my husband would pay $1,249 every two weeks. So we're on my insurance because mine is cheaper. Plus we live in New Jersey. My husband worked in New York. The insurance is, is from New York. So you know how these states are. You can't go out of state and stuff like that. So every penny I earn... Well, not everyone. You know, I got to eat. I got to order lunch sometime. Even though baby daddy gave me lunch, is going towards my children's generational wealth. Right? Is going towards creating generational wealth. But wives... The ladies, this is why you must choose a good husband. You don't want to choose a husband where you have to pay the bills because what that will do is free you up to help to save. And yes, some of my husband money goes towards savings because he's a high earner, but it frees you up to be free, to be creative, save towards your generational wealth, and so on and so forth. Second Chronicles 714. What that say, Pastor? Uh, Shalana, it's sad that Black American culture train women to endure struggles, love. African Caribbean and non-Black Americans encourage hypergamy. I don't know about no Caribbean child and non-Black. I just, I don't know. I'm from the Caribbean. Caribbean women work hard, especially and they come over here. And the African men, honey, they are becoming, they are becoming like these women. These, these over here. I mentor a lot of women and they're all complaining that the men now, these are African boys who came here as teenagers or indulge in the red pill ideology now wants to be going 50-50. Can you imagine? And this is why my content work on everybody. It don't matter who it is. It doesn't matter who it is. <sighs> Something's not right. Um, rich men complain to other men, not other. No. Rich men don't complain about paying, providing for their families. Though... Not because they're rich doesn't mean they're not uh, dusties. But men who prepared, listen to what I'm saying. Men who prepared themselves to be husband. Men who willingly are walking in the role of a husband and provider and a protector. They, they love to provide. They love it. It gives them pleasure. It makes them happy. 
it makes their day to provide. They're not sitting around crying. Orlando, do you know a rich man? Do you know the rich men who are complaining? And when you say rich, what you mean? Clarify rich. The men, rich to me are the men on Shark Tank. Do you think they're complaining to each other about paying the mortgage? Mark Zuckerberg, do you think he's complaining? Did President Biden realize he said the wrong name, then say you're a whole lot better? He's the, yeah, well, no, Zelensky says, well, well, yeah, he did catch himself. He says, Putin, he said, Putin, I can't, I'm just so, I just want to be him so bad. I can't stop thinking about him, something like that. And then Zelensky says, I'm a whole lot better. And Biden said, yes, you are. This is my financial channel. Have you subscribed to my financial channel? Let me get the link. I'll be doing a lot more financial teaching over there, teaching you, showing you how I'm investing. I started a brand new portfolio. So this portfolio is from scratch. So you'll be able to see the portfolio from scratch, okay? So uh, and I'm showing you how I'm doing it. So I have seven years. seven years to, to save up a hundred thousand dollars in here. It's probably going to be, it's going to be a whole lot more, but the, it will probably be more than a hundred thousand dollars, but that's just my goal for now. And what my plan is to front load this account. So hopefully, let's see. Hopefully by the end of the year, I'll have $20,000 in here. My goal. My goal for 2024 is to get $20,000 in this account. Because when you're front loaded, then it does all the heavy lifting for you. Okay. So um, that's my goal. Okay. All right. Let me read these comments. Then I have to go to my class. Starts at 10. Uh, his B swelled for real. Who? Who, who, who are you talking about? Uh, he's been swollen for real. No one told him that president name. Some men want a soft life, like a father is one of the call. Oh, definitely. That's because they're women. They're not real men. They want to be females. Right. They saw their mothers do it, but I'm not your mama. I'm your mother. I'm your mother. I'm not foolish. Right. They, they, they. You would think, right, you would think because they see their mother's struggle, they wouldn't want their hus their wives to struggle. But that's not so. Because they see their mama's struggles, that's what they think a good man is, a good woman is. So if you don't struggle, that's why they say, I want a woman like my mama. Because my mama worked 55 jobs, came home, washed, cooked, clean, had a hot meal on the table every night. So if you're not able to do what their mama do, you're not a good woman. And what's crazy to me is you would think because they saw their mama struggle so much that they um they would not want their wives to struggle. That's one of the things I love about my husband, which prove that I was right. My husband saw his mother being loved, provided for, taken care of. His mother never had to work. His mother, his, his dad, my husband's dad, would come home from work. She was home with the kids. And he would tell her, go sit down and rest and let me cook. I'll cook. 
And that's how my husband learned how to cook. Because his dad would come home and cook. He would, his dad would come home, tell his mom, go sit down on the couch and let me, I got the kids. I'm going to go make dinner. And that's how he learned to cook. That's why he loved to cook. And that's how he treats me. My, my husband treats me the way his dad treated his Miss Princess Boogie. Hey, Princess Boogie. How are you, my darling? Girl, I got to talk to you. I got to talk to you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to email you. If you want to support my channel, uh, please pick up my books on Amazon. That is the link. My husband, thank you, baby. My husband treats me the way his dad treats his mom. And I love that about my husband. My husband treats me like I'm a doll. Like, he doesn't want me to get upset. He... <laughs> He don't want me to be overworking. When we came in this house, he he came when we closed. You know what? Once you're closed, you have to come in with the realtor to make sure everything is okay. And he walked in the living room. He said, mm. he walked in the here in the dining. He said, mm. he said, this is a big house. I'm going to get you somebody to help you to clean it. I've had people cleaning my house for 11 years. You know why? I didn't ask him that. He, but just, he just realized that this is a big house and because he loves me and care for me and he don't want me overworking and stressing out, he realized that he needed to get somebody to help me to clean this house. It is, let me tell you, we have a four bedroom, three floors. It is not easy. During COVID, when people could come in your house, girl, it was just me and Lexi. And big, the two Michaels would clean the kitchen. There was zzz, 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 the kitchen. But that's what you want. Somebody who wants the best for you. Somebody who loves you. Somebody who doesn't want you to work like a feel animal. Ladies and gentlemen, I absolutely love you. How many, how many of you have checked out my books on Amazon? How many of you have left me a glowing five-star review? Let me see it. For the one in the chat, if you've picked up one of my books and you've left a review for me. I want to know. I want to know. I want to know, no, no. I want to know, no, no. I want to know. I want to know. My books are all on Amazon. Please, ma'am. Show me love and support. My cash app is also below. If you want to support my channel, that is a way for you to do it. You could also join my membership. When you join my membership, you will get free books. Well, technically, it's not free. It's you supporting me. So I say thank you by giving you books, okay? These are my books all on Amazon. How many of you have picked up? one book at least and give me a glowing five-star review told somebody about it sent the link to somebody huh they're all on amazon reviews are good okay i have decent reviews on my books okay this one is a five star i just guess that somebody gave me a new review let's see Uh, most recent reviews. Okay. Ah, true facts. <laughs> Beyond straight, straight scared girl. So, you know, this is your way to support me. I give you all a lot of good content. I, I give you all a lot. 
and um, your way of pouring back into me, supporting my channel. All right. So uh, if you haven't checked out any of my books or maybe you picked up my books, but you have not left me a glowing five star review, please go on over to Amazon. OK, and leave the review. Get the email that you got when you bought the book so you could review the book from the email. All right. I absolutely love you, my darlings. I adore you. Thank you so much. I'm going to leave this up for a minute so that I know there's a delay, but please show me love and support on Amazon. Okay. Or my cash app is below. Um, join my membership. All right. I love you. I love you. Um, I have to run because I have my class. Thank you. Oh, Miss uh, Overseer Beverly is the only one that bought my book. I know Miss Boogie bought my book. Uh, the dust is are getting worse day by day. We can't settle. No, man. Is the membership through your website ready yet? Um, no, I'm, I'm going to work on that, uh, Miss Boogie. I'm going to work on that, okay? Have a wonderful weekend. Miss Boogie, I'm going to have that soon. Once I'm done with this class, this class, I only have two more lessons left this week and next week. And then I'm going to set up the uh, the membership for the princesses on the, the, the class, okay? I love you all. I love you. I love you. I just bought. Yes, I bought all you. But I know you do. Thank you so much. I love you guys. Thank you so much for your love and support. Show me love and support on Amazon. My cash app is linked below. You can join my membership here. When you join the membership here, you will get free books uh, when they come out. So I have a new book coming out soon. So if you want to get that book free, you need to join the membership. I'm also going to put the membership on back on um, Patreon because with the other website, people were confused. So I have changed over the website, but I think I'm just going to keep it stable from now on, okay? Because I did lose a lot of membership and they haven't rejoined yet. All right, darlings. I love you. I love you. I love you. Talk to you later. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Bye. I'm going to leave this up for a minute.